Hi everyone, welcome to Terry TV and look at me, am I on time? What? <laughs> Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, Imagineer here, pop icon and all around uh, crazy person. <laughs> now I know that uh, uh, if you've been watching me for a while, you notice I'm a little Academy centric and uh, Screen Actors Guild Academy centric because this is award season and it's one of my favorite times of the year. I've been watching the Academy Awards since I was three years old and have never missed a show, good and bad. And uh, I'm really not about the show. I just like to see the speeches and I like to see, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily like to see the dresses. <laughs> pretty snarky sometimes about that because sometimes these hairstyles that people do or these dresses or these outfits look like they just woke up or they don't own a mirror so i uh my my tribe is asking me to review the uh clothing right after the academy awards and i probably will do that but um i'll go live and we'll we'll do that but uh i still wanted to talk about the academy awards today because i have I have been talking about various movies on Terry TV. Terry TV has been talking about the top 10, both in um, the Screen Actors Guild has five they choose. And then the um, top 10 in uh, the Academy. Now the Academy went with 10 because they claim they had a hard time picking only five for the nominations. And then they still kept it at five directors, five actors, and five female actors as the new way you're supposed to say it. I still think actress is a lot more feminine, but I like that. So that's me. But uh, the thing is, is that uh, many people have said, why 10 films, if not 10 for the other categories? And that led me down a rabbit hole of, huh, because I looked at the directors and as you know, um, well, not as you know, let me say that again. One of my favorite movies of the year, let me start over, it's Monday. Uh, let me take a sip of, sip of tea and maybe that'd be even better. I've been in films like Ghostbusters, Flintstones, Men in Black, and the other, and just last night while resting, um, I had my dad's celebration of life Saturday. And so I was pretty tired on Sunday. So on Sunday, we um, did this thing where we randomly had movies chosen for us. We have this system that you can put that little shuffle on and it will shuffle. And uh, uh, it, it one of the things that shuffled was Jungle to Jungle, which is a Disney film um, starring Tim Allen. And I worked with a great shop, Kurtzman, Nicotero, and Burger, K&B. You may remember Greg Nicotero, if you love Walking Dead, he's the director of Walking Dead and a very dear friend of mine. He's such a sweet fella. and. Um, and uh, I was at the shop when um, Jungle to Jungle was uh, being worked on and, and KNB did the effects. And so I was responsible for a cat in Jungle to Jungle. And if you've seen Jungle to Jungle and if you haven't seen it in a while, you might want to revisit it. It's a sweet movie. It's not going to win any Academy Awards, but it's a very sweet, tender movie as Disney used to do. And uh, it's it's really lovely, but I did this I did this cat. So I have a dear friend who worked with me, and he did the actual finishing of the cat, meaning he did the fur work. But I did the understructure. So the idea is that Tim is playing with a blow dart, and he nails the cat. And then there's this prop that we made of the cat that's like this, and I made the cat. So I made the floppy. And then it was covered by my friend and uh, Tim Allen wrote a lovely letter to KNB saying, um, thank you for one of the best props I've ever worked with. And um, used to be up at KNB, but I don't know if it is, but you know, it was like getting a letter to myself. So it was very sweet. So it was kind of nice to revisit a couple of films that either I had a part in one way or another Ghostbusters. I was the terror dog and worked on the Marshmallow Man. And I'm getting a lot of Ghostbusters stuff because of the new one coming out. Looks interesting, but looks mostly CG. Tell me if you know whether it is or not. 
So I'm going down this rabbit hole because the Academy Awards, I work very hard to see everything. And with streaming, it's actually getting a little bit easier because I can see documentary short subjects. There's a few that are streamable, um, animated shorts, which are some of them are not all. Like the Heron, Miyazaki's Heron is not streamable. You got to go to a theater. So I told my husband I'd like to do that this week sometime is to see Miyazaki's new film as I see all those films. So, um, but I got to see some that were streamable and it was really fun to do that. But I kept thinking about Barbie. And many people are talking about Barbie because Best Actress Barbie didn't get nominated, you know? So, so the Barbie movie got eight nominations, but one of them was not best actress. And one of them was not best act was best director. And I started to think about this. And so this is why I'm asking the question, was there ever, and the answer is yes, just so you know, be ready for it. Uh, was there ever a film that was only nominated in the best picture category that won? And uh, my husband and I were discussing this yesterday and he kept saying, oh, there's 12, but there are 12 Academy Award winning pictures, best pictures that didn't have best actor or best actress nominations in their plethora of non nominations. I wanted to know if there was a film that had won Best Picture that was not nominated in actor, actress, or director. I was keeping it simple, okay? Because um, to me, this sounds crazy. Now, also editing, but I'm digressing. So this sounded crazy to me. And my husband was asking the question and I was asking the question and we were trying to find out if this question could be done. And what we realized was 1933. 1933 was the fifth Academy Awards. Remember, I told you that I am a Academy Award junkie. And uh, I'm not like some of you out there, Joe Penny and um, and my friend David Skipper. Um, you guys are like when it comes, many of you, you know, you know everything right down to what they ate for breakfast. But that's not me. I'm just saying that I watch every year and I can't tell you like if you said what one in 1934, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'd have to look it up. But I do know that I was asking and that was a uh, Grand Hotel. So Grand Hotel was nominated for only Best Picture. And it won Best Picture, but it wasn't nominated for anything else. One time, one, one, one. Now, there were films before that that may not have had certain categories, but here's the thing about the Academy Awards that you may or may not know. As the Academy Awards began to get momentum, one, two, three, four, five year, right? Uh, more categories were added. And so sometimes it's because the categories were not added. In the case of a lot of these early Academy Awards, whether you know it or not, there were write-ins so that the actors could write in actors they thought were good. And then the one that got the most votes got the Academy Award. It's kind of cool, huh? Nowadays, there's so many actors that that would take a long time to dig through, wouldn't it? So that's why they have what's called a nomination committee. And I was, uh, I've had the pleasure of being on the Screen Actors Guild nomination committee four times. And when you do this, you see hundreds of films in the, for one year when I was the nomination committee person, I took it so seriously that I saw over 600 films, many of what many of which never see the light of a nomination. It gave me great respect for the nominations, which is why when you hear me say, or as you hear me say today, that the nomination is the big win and the Oscar, should you win it, is the cherry on the cake. You've got the cake. Now you've got the cherry on top if you win it because you are voted for by your peers. Actors vote for actors. Editors vote for editors. Animators vote for animators. I'm sure you knew this. But just in case you didn't, 
This is how it works. So it's a big deal to get nominated. But I started to think about this. And there's a couple reasons, I think, that uh, Grand Hotel didn't get nominated for Best Actor or Best Actress or even written in. And that's because uh, there was a time, and maybe many of you think this way now, that the Academy is a bunch of stuffed shirts. They don't flex. They keep picking the same old rigid choices that they always have. And that's not true recently. I mean, you've got Parasite and everything everywhere all at once. Two, that one that I thought, whoo, that's a surprise. Now, everything everywhere all at once wasn't as big a surprise because the Academy loves the cast that was in that. This is a gracious, if you saw last year's Academy Awards, you know that you just fell in love with that cast. And I didn't like the film, except for the end. But I didn't like the film much, but I sure love that cast. I love that cast talking about their environment of fun and playfulness and happiness. So the movie that they made came out great and they celebrated each other, whether they were nominated or not. They celebrated those that were nominated and the wins of their fellow actors that were nominated. It just it was so warm and fuzzy for me. And I love that. And I'm not necessarily always used to that at the Academy Awards, as you can you can remember. We had a streaker one time go through there. You know, when streakers were popular, <laughs> streaker ran through the Academy Awards. I always say there's a will, there's a way, you know, all the security in the world. And then streaker wanted to streak. Boom. They streaked. Uh, meaning that they ran naked, if you're too young to understand what a streaker means. But uh, things like that. Um, the Academy Awards is just something very, very special. So let's get back to Grand Hotel. It was and is still, 1933, a comedy. And the Academy back then was not into comedy. In fact, when I was a little girl, they seemed to not really go for comedies. They wanted more of the dramatic acting. And that seemed to take over. They weren't much into fantasy, although there wasn't a lot of fantasy when I was younger. But they really wouldn't pick, like I remember in 1977, many people campaigned for them to vote Star Wars. And... Mm, you know, they, <laughs> I can feel the tug, you know, I can just feel it. So uh, there are things that the Academy seems not to really, you know, get excited about. But as the years progressed in the Academy Awards, more and more categories were added. One that yours truly is personally uh, a part of is the makeup and makeup effects category because there was makeup category, but there wasn't a makeup effects category. And at that time, we met at a theater down in Hollywood and we were asked to bring some of our makeup or our uh, uh, cosplay creations at the time there were costumes. And we brought them, in fact, top makeup artists were on the panel that day to uh, argue for, campaign for, makeup effects. Because you have the beauty of a regular makeup where you make someone look like a character that is depicted in a film. So you're, 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 you're playing a particular character in history, you know, Lincoln, or Martin Luther King, or Cleopatra, or in this case, Maestro, um, which is up for an, I think it's up, I'm not sure. Anyway, Maestro, there's makeup, but it's it's a little bit of effects makeup, but you're you're doing it so that the person looks like the person depicted, right? Um, and a lot of times it can be a beautiful ma beauty makeup, Right. So the actress has to look well, like like let's look at um, Barbie. Barbie is not necessarily effects makeup, but the beauty makeup, the ponytail, everything that's together with the hair and everything really helps Margot look like Barbie. I mean, exactly like Barbie, like she's, you know, a giant Barbie. Uh, she really looked like Barbie. And but when you put that up against something like uh 
trying to think if there's anything that has a really aggressive makeup this year. And it's not coming to, it's not coming front of mind, but you know, it's kind of like, let me just pull out a Rick Baker one. That's very, uh, it's, it's older, but American werewolf in London, when the guy is actually transforming before your very eyes, the hair is growing and the jaw is coming out and their, their eyes are getting, you know, you know, all of that. They're actually transforming. That is an effects makeup. And they were all clumped together for years and had to compete. And it's apples and oranges. Wouldn't you agree? So I, I was with a bunch of people that came down to campaign to the Academy, why it was so important to do effects makeup and beauty makeup. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons that today makeup and makeup effects are often separated when there are uh, nominations in those categories. Some They're not always nominated. Sometimes those categories don't always pop up. But like my husband was saying, well, when was editing a category? And that wasn't until I think my husband told me 1935 editing became a category. And you're kind of like, what? You know, because editing is so important and an integral part. Is that the right word? To a movie being snappy or not being snappy, right? That the movie really gets you like, ooh. If the editing is like so good that you're like on the ed edge of your seat, you know, action wise, um, there's there's a couple of action films that the Screen Actors Guilds have to vote on. And I have to tell you that John Wick 4 and Mission Impossible, edge of my seat. And the editor just bah, 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 bah. actors are good. Everything's good. But that editor in that final phase is what gets you, you know, <sighs> you know, the whole thing. And then there's more of a. Quiet editing in Zone of Interest. Remember I told you about this movie that's a foreign movie about an SS officer that lives next door to a concentration camp? Um, whoa. Sound, everything. Amazing. But editing, too. Editing is completely important. So really happy to see that started to come into play in 1935. And they start making more and more. As as people say, well, wait a minute, what about this? Or wait a minute, what about this? And I don't know if you've heard, but they're talking about casting because they're thinking that another award that the Academy should consider is casting because the wrong casting, we both know, can really kill a film, can it? So it's very interesting to see how the Academy Awards are developing and um, I knew that there was probably a very few set of films that had won for Best Picture that had only been nominated for Best Picture and nothing else, like one nomination, Best Picture. And then they won, is one. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that because it's, it's kind of an interesting little bit of tidbit and it's kind of fun. I always thought that it's hard to, to say best picture without best director, but it's happened quite a bit. It's happened quite a bit where best picture wins and best director was not even nominated. And you're like, what? I mean, to me, I, what? I know I said that several times, you know. And then there's been times when a movie uh, is, a, is a surprise, like last, was it last year? Year before? Coda, when Coda won, I told everybody Coda was going to be the winner. And everybody said the power of the dog was going to be the winner. And I said, no, because power of the dog is a dog. That's not even a good movie, in my opinion. I didn't. I thought that movie was a waste of my time. But uh, if you like it, then no offense to you. But I thought that movie was a waste of time. And I said, Coda's going to take it. And Coda was nominated not for director, um, best picture and actor nomination is what I remember. Might, might have had some other things like story and whatever. But the point is, of the, of the ones they call the big ones, um, there wasn't a lot. And yet, Coda I knew was going to take it. I could tell. I just knew it. Just as like back in the day, Richard Dreyfus, Goodbye Girl, I had Goodbye Girl. Now, I'm not saying that in the other categories, I'm going to nail it. But a lot of times I do because I'll say. So this year is a little more challenging for me because these films are very, um, there's a lot of angst in these films. 
And uh, as I watched the top 10, and I think uh, Oppenheimer is really a strong front runner. A lot of people are like Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer. Um, I'd love to see Barbie get it because I think the there's more to that film than many people don't realize. But if you just watch the surface and you didn't hear what, how, you know, and why and when and where, um, that movie might not do it. But the one that's also extremely strong is um, Zone of Interest. It is chilling. And uh, please don't not see it because it is really, really good. Really, really good. Um, the um, 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 Killers of the Flower Moon or Killers of the, the Scorsese film. Forgive me if I've got it wrong. I should just look it up because it's Monday and um, I have this this challenge with, you know, I'm coming off of my dad's celebration of life. So I'm kind of like, you know, I remember some things, but not, yeah. Killers of the flower moon. Oh, I did have it right. Yay for me. And Maestro is nominated. Um, it's long. And this frustrates me because Martin Scorsese has the best editor. I mean, editors worship this editor, Thelma. And, uh, oh my God, you know, oh my gosh. And I just, I just see her trying to do her job and Scorsese saying, it's my film. I want it to be three hours long. And she's like, but if you get it tighter, it's going to have more impact on everybody. They're going to get the message and it's going to feel, okay? That's, I, I can feel her saying that, being in the industry. So it hurts me that he didn't listen to her. I mean, you have the creme de la creme. How many times has this happened to you? You you really know your stuff, okay? As a sculptor and a designer, I personally, Terry Harden, really know my stuff. But if you're going to micromanage me, then we can't. If you're going to lock us down and make us do it your way, and you've paid the extra money because you say you're so great, and then you lock them down or someone locks you down, that really is, let's just call it as you see it, it sucks, you know, you, you you hire the top painter, the top choreographer, the top whatever, and then you try to micromanage them. It's counterproductive and therefore doesn't create. When you let an artist spread their wings, no matter what it is, in any one of these categories or anything that you do, you're going to get a better product. You know, you're going to get a totally better product. Right now I'm working on a garage with my colleague who does the mold work for the mold work and a lot of the painting for my company, Terry Art and Designs. And uh, we are in there and we'll go, I'll go, I need this here. What do you think? And he'll say, sketch up something for me. So for example, I'm one of these um, people who I don't cry about it or whatever, but here, if you look here, here's a piece of paper here, right? So then someone will say, show me the desk that you want. And I'll just automatically in a very short time, I don't care about measurements and stuff because I know he's got that. He just basically wants to know what I'm thinking. So I go, this is, you know, this. And then up here, if we go like this, there's another shelf above like this, right? That goes there. This is the top shelf, bottom shelf, right? And then what I want is a piece that folds out like this, okay? Maybe I do an arrow that shows this folds out, you know? Can you guys see that? Well, here, let me zoom in, okay? So now I'm saying here's base shelf, this is the shelves represented for above. And even if it's more, I'll do this so that you'll see, you know, this are the shelves above, right? Here, shelves, 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 like that, right? How long did this take me? This shows I want this to fold out, but then it also means that I want this to close and meet with this line and lock. So that now anything inside this cavity is protected. And then when I need an extra table, whoop. 
So this is what we're doing in my garage is we're going around and we're like, okay, here, I want this here. I want this. And because we're two artists, our wings are like at full deployment and we're flapping like crazy. And we're like, this is what we want. This is what we want. This is what we want. Ooh. And collaboration is energizing, which I really needed last week because Saturday was my dad's celebration of life and I was messed up. So I was trying to unmess up. You know how I say at the end of each uh, video, and if you're just joining to me, let me tell you what I say. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. It's because when you are charitable to someone else, it goes into your heart and your body and makes you feel better. So if you start to get a bit of depression, and uh, I don't really like to use that word, but I think that was happening with me. I worked on something where I could collaborate with another artist briefly. Had to be briefly because I still have a lot of adult obligations that I have to do. But it allows my mind to be free. Also, Christian, my associate, said, you know, exercise really helps. And it did a little bit, but nah. I, I, nah, I won't even go there. But my point is this, if you're going to take the time to hire someone that is an expert in their craft, you got to let them do their craft, you know, don't start, you know, and I don't know if you're this type of person, but you may be the victim of someone who is micromanaging you. For example, you want to do a podcast. So you hire someone or you, you ask someone if they'll help you do a podcast and then you tell them how you want the podcast to be done. You know what I mean? I think we've all been there. So that's why I'm kind of sharing with you this right now, because uh, when you let an artist and this friend, my friend, Christian, can build anything. He has this great brain. All I have to do is do a sketch like this. Very simple. And he goes, this, I don't need it. Doesn't need measurements. We get it. Because we are two creative brains, two, two creative brains that can do it. And because I don't worry about it being perfect, done, right? It works great. It works great. So there's no reason that you need to be, you know, super perfect or anything. Just know and realize that, um, that, this is how things get worked out. Now, in Terry's Tribe, um, which is my Patreon page, and you heard me mention it to you a million times, and again, I'll just put a banner up here for you so you can see it, is patreon.com slash Terry Arden. This is where we'll get together and work on some of these challenges. We also have favorite things that we like to do or like to have, and we share with each other our different various backgrounds because this community is about support, uh, kindness, and helping people get stuff done. So if you have a question about being an Imagineer, Patreon's a good place to ask it, but you may not have that question. Disney may not even be your thing, okay? Disney may not, but Disney is one thing that could be. OK, so that's all I'm saying about that, that um, Disney could be your thing. And if Disney is your thing. Yay. But Disney is not everything. Art is mainly what I talk about. Um, self-worth and why you deserve to give yourself your self-worth and acknowledge yourself as an artist is uh, is one of the things we do at Patreon, more private. We discuss things that we really couldn't discuss on the public channel just because and I'm not going to give you any examples of just the way it is. I do two live broadcasts, Monday, one Monday, one Friday. And then I also do a Zoom call either at night or in the daytime on the Patreon page, just five bucks a month. So check it out. We won't grab you. We won't reach through the screen and attack you. This is the way it is. This is the way things work. Okay. So that's what I mean. You know, if you are an expert at something and someone asks you, please help me. And then they tell you how to do it. You just go, oh, really? Seriously? Why did I even say yes to helping you? You know, again, always work to be part of the solution, not the problem. And your life is going to go a lot better. You know, you could be all about yourself, but your life is going to go better if you are a part of the solution and not the problem. Okay. As we whisk our say way towards Valentine's Day, um, 
And some people that's a good day, some people that's a bad day. So look for a way to be a good Valentine. Why not? You know, why not? Okay, so let's get to these comments and see how y'all are doing. Nate, how are you, honey? Forgive me, all of a sudden I've, I felt like my nose was running. I guess it wasn't. And I'm sitting here having my tea this morning. I think I'll just hold my cup while I chat with y'all. Gosh, it's good to see you, Nate. Um, and Bob Berdeen. Hello, Bob Berdeen. Joe, hello, Joe. Oh, I forgot you were going to be on. I got to get lunch, but I'll be back. Joe, no problem. And it looks like, uh, let's see. Well, I'll stick around for a bit. I don't have to go right away. You are so cute. You are really, really cute. Listen, um, this is just... Uh, one of the things that uh, I just really wanted to think about today, maybe people will pop in and say, what was that one movie that what that was only nominated for Best Picture and then won Best Picture? Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Only one time, which was my suspicion, you know? Um, but there are several that didn't have actor categories or didn't have a director category and one best picture. So is it is it useless information? Um yeah. <laughs> but it's still cool, you know? I mean it is really a cool it is a cool. I like going down that rabbit hole because I love the Academy Awards. And if you're someone who's looking at this and saying, oh, "I don't know." It's okay. It's just it's something that I'm crazy about. And one of the things I've got to say both about the Academy Awards and the Screen Actors Guild is they turn me on to things I might never watch. So a few years ago, um, one of the series that was nominated with the Screen Actors Guild was Yellowstone. And I watched fourth season of Yellowstone and absolutely flipped over it. So then I went back and watched the other seasons and I really enjoyed it. I was really sorry when they started to have conflict and challenges. Um, the other one this year is Lessons in Chemistry. I absolutely flipped over this series. In fact, I cried through a lot of it. I just thought it was so good, so wonderful. That's on Apple. And um, it, it's SAG again, Screen Actors Guild, that I have this uh, rule that I watch everything so that when I vote, I vote with knowledge. And that's me. I'm not saying, I'm not telling anyone what they should do. But for me, this is very important that this happens and not always easy because I don't watch a lot of television. I'm usually very, very busy doing other stuff. But this worked out this year and I saw everything and I was blown away by things that I might not have even bothered with. And I was grateful that I did. Another one was A Small Light, which is on Disney+. Plus. Wow. Wow, or painkiller on Netflix, things I might not have ever taken a look at. Just saying. But now, because they were nominated, I had to. You know, it's not fair to say no, you know, to that. And um, um, another thing was Little Murders in the Building, which is a show that doesn't really resonate with me, to be honest. But this year, this last season, Meryl Streep was a, was a um, reoccurring role on the show. And what was fun is that sometimes the Screen Actors Guild will do interviews with the cast. And that was one of my favorite interviews as they all talked about what it felt like to work opposite the fabulous and fantastic and marvelous Meryl Streep. And um, I remember a few years back, there was the movie Doubt. And the movie Doubt, they spoke about um, Amy Adams, who played the young nun. You know, she said, thank God for the habit, because she was really nervous about being between two Academy Award winners. <laughs> you know, young actress going, yeah. You know, uh, you can imagine that you're kind of, you try to like not be all that. You know what I mean? You try to be like, I'm cool. I, I've got this. I auditioned for this. I, I was selected over many other actors. So I deserve this, but still, yikes. And uh, it brings me to yesterday. One of the movies that we watched was Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy. What you may or may, and Sidney Poitier, 
I would never not, I would never forget Cindy Bardet. Uh, what you may not know is the young woman in that is Catherine Hepburn's niece. We just found this out yesterday. We, we tend to like go down rabbit holes and it's her niece. And she, uh, this is a very special movie for me because I'm a mixed race individual. My dad's black and my mother's white. So when I was a little girl and this movie was released, I about lost it because I saw my family and I saw my mom and my dad. And I kind of thought of what they might've been going through. It was nothing like my parents went through, but it was neat to see on the screen. And the other thing we learned yesterday was that Sidney Poitier couldn't act opposite Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. They were just too, too big of, 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 uh, of, of, of history making megastars, like mega actors, like amazing actors, Spencer Tracy, whoa, and Catherine Hepburn, yeah! And so all of Sidney Portie's scenes in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner are done to empty chairs because he just got too nervous. I mean, and all I could think of is, yeah, whoa. Also, Spencer Tracy was very, very sick. He was actually dying. And when you watch this and you see how Catherine Hepburn reacts as his wife and she gets teary-eyed a lot, you wonder if part of that was because she saw the love of her life fading and he brings it in guess who's coming to dinner if you've not seen this movie from 1960 it's in the 60s it was released i want to say because i think i was 10 which means it was 1966 67 um but you can find it sydney poitier Catherine hepburn spencer tracy be sure you check it out and it's nice to have in the back of your head some of the stuff that the actors had to work with while being on filming the movie, you know, so you've got the characters you play, but you also have the real life intruding, just like my real life was intruding last week. So that's why I'm saying this is a really interesting thing to watch Catherine Hepburn as the wife, knowing that she's also, you know, she and Spencer Tracy are together and he is very uh, sick at this time, but Spencer Tracy always brings it forward with dignity, gives it everything he's got. And this is, I believe, the last film he did before he passed. So it's 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 so compelling. I actually saw it in a different light yesterday because I knew Sidney Portier was nervous, you know, and I always think I met Sidney Portier one day in Venice when I was doing a breast cancer walk practice. And we, he talked with us for all me and 60 women for like 30 like 30 minutes or something. It was amazing. Yeah, that was when he got his uh, Life Achievement Award at the Academy, by the way. And, um, but it was just, you just don't, you he feels like a rock when he acts. And when you see that, you know, you hear it's nervous, it kind of makes you feel like, well, you know, I'm an actor too. And sometimes I get nervous, you know, yeah, auditioning is always a challenge for me. And you find out that there are people out there that are amazing actors that say, yeah, auditioning sucks for me too. You know, oh, cool. You know, I have something I can identify with, with somebody, you know, that I admire. So it's all good. It's all fun. This is why I like films. This is why I love films. And, uh, and I love looking into films and behind the scenes and stuff like that. And that's why I'm, I like Barbie because I did a lot of research on that. Cause I was just blown away on how well everybody, I, I noticed things in that movie and I thought, how did she get this done and how did they achieve this and how did they do this? And it's really fascinating. It's good. It's amazing work. It's amazing work. So, um, we'll see if Barbie wins, but I'm kind of feeling like Oppenheimer is the, 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 you know, the big dog on campus, but that doesn't mean anything. It just, you know, there are some really good acting in there. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Wow. Really amazing. So, um, yeah. So this is what I like about this whole thing. So I know I'm chattering away. I'm going to let you go now. It's, um, which is a short one today, but it's Monday and I'm actually making good on some promises that I did because up until the 10th, I was kind of a little shaky. Okay, I was a lot shaky, let's be real. And now that my dad's celebration of life, of life went well and everybody was happy and everybody got fed and everybody was told beautiful stories and everything and that got put to bed, oh, 
I can now look to the future and get stuff done. And many promises that I've made to many of you out there and to others, charities and places like that, that I kept in podcasts that wanted to interview me. I just kept pushing it back and pushing it back and saying, let me up to the 10th, let me up to the 10th. And every, and you all were so great and wonderful. And I want to thank you for that. So with that, I'm going to, um, there's one more comment here. Yes, Mike, of course you were asking me how I'm doing. See, I thought I saw it. So I answered it beforehand. Um, um, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for always coming in and asking me how I'm doing and how my mom's doing and how we're doing much better. So as the weeks progress, we will start to think and work on things. Uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So, you know, taxes, I live in California, so taxes are a front runner. Huh. <laughs> I won't go into that because, but you know, you guys are probably in a good mood with this Academy one, but I just thought it was interesting. You know, um, this is me. This is my brain. This is Cherry TV. Subscribe if you like this kind of eclectic feel uh, in you know, a YouTube channel. And if you don't, you have the power to change it. So uh, not my feed, but the channel. And I will not be upset. It's all our taste, right? Yeah. So um, you guys have a lovely day. Enjoy yourself, Mike. Thank you for asking me how I am. And guys, do something nice for someone else. I promise you, it will make you feel a whole lot better. These broadcasts are something that when you give me your input in comments and you share with me your thoughts and things or just say hello, it lifts my spirits and makes me feel, you know, because I don't know if you've ever tried broadcasting, but you're alone in a room. I don't have a studio audience. <laughs> I'm just talking to a, 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 a single, like a camera, you know, there's several of them, you know, like there's this, this angle too that, you know, that you've got that too. But my point is it's a camera. So there's no auditory, auditory, auditory response that can help me to understand if you're enjoying yourself or not. So when you comment, it helps me to see. And if you ever have a question, you can ask me a question or you can reach out to me at terryharden.com or you can check out the Patreon page. For now, have a wonderful week. If you live in the Western states, we're dry this weekend. We're drying out. So we got some beautiful weather, a little bit chilly, which is my jam. I love chilly. So uh, you guys uh, enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy your day. Have a great, great, great week. And uh, I promise you that if I'm going to be uh, live, I will say live, live, on Fridays because sometimes I'm pre-recorded and sometimes I'm live. And what was really cute last Friday, people went, ah, you're live, like live, live. And I realized I probably should tell you that when I tell you I'm, it's, 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 I'm going to show up whether I'm live, live, I will say Terry live, live or something like that. Okay. All right, guys, hugs and kisses. Have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Check out the Patreon page and be well, be safe and know you deserve to make a living doing what you love. Okay. You really do. All right. We'll talk later. Bye for now.